law, but that's a complete lie. God does a work on human reasoning. He works by his standards, not by society's standards. The standards of society will shift with the times. They will shift with the decades, but the standards of God remain the same. No matter what, the Bible declares is the same today, yesterday and forever. That means he never changes. That means he remains the same always, constantly and forever. So John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, but whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Romans 5.8 says, But God demonstrates his own love towards us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So when the Bible says, For God so loved the world, He's not talking about the world systems or the world's ways. He's talking about his creation, the people inside the world. Because ultimately the gospel of Jesus Christ is that the creator became the creation in order to reach the created. And that means he came down in, in the form of flesh, humbling himself to a servant of his own creation so that he may set an example of how to live a better life. So he may set an example of how to live a, a selfless life, not a selfish life. If you believe you're going to come to Jesus Christ and God is like a genie but grants you wishes, you're not believing in correct Christianity. Because correct Christianity is about service. It's about serving the Most High God. The word minister, when you hear the word minister thrown around in the church, it's not a position of power. It's meant to be a position of servanthood. The word minister is literally translated in the languages of old as servant. That means the person who leads a church should be the biggest servant in a church. The person who leads a congregation should be the biggest servant to that congregation. They should be willing to lay down their lives for the gospel. And that's exactly what Jesus Christ did. He laid down his life for each of you, for you and I, for everyone, regardless of background, regardless of race, regardless of where we're from, regardless of where we are born. Jesus Christ gave his life for us so we may live a free life, a life without the shackles of sin. That doesn't mean we have an excuse to do whatever we want. Because when he came down for his life, death and resurrection, he set a standard of how we should live our lives and how we should strive to live our lives. But as we're born again, as we accept him as our, as our Lord and Saviour, as we accept him as our God, we receive the Holy Spirit. And that Holy Spirit will convict us of certain ideals, of certain opinions about different subjects. And we should receive a nature change. The evidence of our conversion in the mighty name of Jesus Christ should be in our fruit. And that fruit in the mighty name comes from our words and actions. It comes from our nature change. The things of old should no longer, should no longer interest you. Before I was a Christian, before I became all, all everything I became in Christ, I used to hang on the street. I used, to, I used to be around people who hustled. I used to smoke drugs. I used to drink on a daily basis. And then after I was born again, after I became a Christian, I changed my ways. I look back at the things that used to give me joy. I look back at the things that used to give me peace and they no longer gave me joy or peace. And I came to the understanding that anything in this world that we seek, what we believe gives us joy, but we believe gives us peace, only gives us temporary gratification, only gives us instant gratification. Because although it may feel good to be drunk at the time, the next day we surely regret it. But since we're coming to Jesus Christ, I don't wake up with regrets anymore. I don't wake up regretting the night before. I don't wake up with an emptiness inside because I try to fill my life with instant gratification. I wake up with a peace and a joy that surpasses all understanding, which can only be found in the loving embraces of a good God. And when we allow ourselves to walk fully in that peace, when we allow ourselves to walk fully in that joy, we feel a love that surpasses any love we may feel here on earth. A love that surpasses any kind of logical thinking or logical action of any individual because Jesus Christ, because our Lord and Saviour, our God, His power, His wisdom, His love, His understanding, His strength is far above our own limitation. Whereas our love may only be limited in the human sense, it may leave us one day, it may disappear from us one day, it may even be based in love. The love of God is eternal and the Bible declares that God is love, but what is love? Love is defined by God's standard, it's not defined by our standard. We have a habit nowadays of deciding to define things for ourselves, such as emotions, such as ways of life, but the ultimate reality is, the more we try to define things by our standards, the more morally corrupt and bankrupt those standards become. We see in the world around us today, the things people call good are actually evil, and the things people call evil are actually good to the point now where we're reaching a point in society where things are becoming so dark so depraved when we're allowing people to kill each other on the streets. 
walk past by a kid's carrying knives, selling